All right, guys, so here's some 410, 415, 415H, 420, and 420H. Now, the pitch of these is all identical. It goes from the center of that pin to the center of that pin. Is always a half inch on all of these. Anything with a number four slash whatever. Uh, it goes from uh, four, ten, all the way up to 480. And then after that, it starts getting into double row links and stuff. So, not even going to go up that far because you'll just never deal with that. But, the roller itself... Every one of these is identical. It's always 5 sixteenths, half inch spaced. So a sprocket that fits this small chain will fit every one of these. It will not fit all of these going backwards because it'll be too wide. And I'll explain that in a second. So here's a standard crank sprocket. And if you had a bicycle, this would fit right on it perfectly. Alright. Now, here is the 420 chain. Fits on it perfectly. So no problem at all. Alright. Same with all these. They're all the same pitch. Same roller, same pitch. All the way down the line. And just for good measure, so you see, there's the 450. Okay. All right. So here's a 420 sprocket, and as you can see, it's a great. And then we get to the 415. And the chain can't sit over it. You get to this son. You can't even get to the top. Alright. So what it is, is it's the wide profile of the sprocket that you buy your chain according to. Alright. So. With that said. Okay. These are typically one eighth of an inch spaced this way. Um, the 415 uh, chain is 3 16 spaced, and that's between the two inner plates of the link. That's the value you we're looking at. And then on a 420 chain, we're looking at a quarter inch from there to there. And the next size up from this would be a 428, which is actually 5 sixteenths. So, it goes all the way up to like 480 <laughs> for chain sizes. And they're all actually half inch, 5 sixteenths roller. But then they start double, double rowing them and... All kinds of stuff. I think a 580 is almost 3 inches wide by the time you're done. Because what they do is they they add uh, rows of links. So you're actually like a chain like this by the time you're done. <laughs> so. Anyways, that's like industrial farm stuff. But we don't have to worry about that. So, anyways. A couple of things to note on these is these break pretty easy once you get to this kind of chain now this is an mx chain it's usually a dead giveaway when you see the gold looking thing well they peen over these pins super these pins are super hard the mx chains usually are assembled then heat treated so, if you get one of these, and you got a cheap chain link breaker, it's gonna break <laughs> your chain link breaker. Uh, these are very, very hard to press these pins out. Uh, this one, on the other hand, comes right out easy. It's a standard steel. 
but anything that's labeled that mix, these are a hardened pin that's in these, so and it gets hardened after they assemble it. I uh, just thought I'd note that, but yeah, I hope that helps some people. But yeah, this is a standard bicycle chain. These are the standard chains you'll see on a motorized bicycle, usually on a motorcycle right here. Um, one thing to note too, if you try and use a 420, and a lot of people have on motorized bicycles, some cases will let you because they're pretty close. But sometimes this side, on um, going in, like say your sprockets here, where your case, it'll chew into the case. So, just be aware of that. Um, one other thing to note, the tinsel strength of these usually holds about 1,200 pounds. That's what it's, they're usually rated for. A standard one of these is usually about 1,800. The... Uh, H chain is usually about 2200. They rate the standard for 20 chain, it's usually about 3000. And the 420 H chain is usually 3700 for tinsel strength, roughly. Just, just a rough idea if you kind of get where it's going. That's saying the chain was made by the same place, same material. I think that's all based on steel, this standard steel chain, so, I mean, don't hold me to the values, but that's just the general ideal, you know, kind of number that they throw out there. So, I hope that explains what it is, and how you can figure out which one you need, but a lot of people just ask that question, and there's your answer. Alright, so here's one other thing to mention, and I'm going to just show you guys this, with these two. Alright, so here's a standard 415, and a 415H. One's a little thicker in plates and all that good stuff. Now, people ask, will the H1 fit a standard 415? Yes, there's absolutely no problem. Because... From this plate to this plate is identical inside. The roller, the pitch, the spacing, they're both identical. The thing that is a little different on some of the Chinese ones, as if you can see, it's just ever so slightly a little wider, and that's because on the Chinese ones they usually just use thicker plates and whatnot. So, in general, they're always a little bit thicker. But it really shouldn't affect anything. If it fits 415, either one will work. And if you got a 420 chain, same thing. As you can see, these are slightly a little thicker, the plates, than the standard one. But when you put them side by side, since it's only this internal section that matters... Alright, so here's a 420 sprocket, and that's a standard chain, that's a 420 uh, H chain on there, so it's the internal values here between the rollers and spacing that the teeth fit in, so that's what counts, not the wideness. Not to say one of these might not hit something that's on your project if it's really thick. Some of the cheap Chinese ones are just thick steel instead of upgraded steel. So keep that in mind too. But yeah, I mean, the H just stands for the high strength and the MX usually stands uh, for the type of steel that they use. It's usually heat treated. So, keep that in mind, and the gold chain look is usually almost always an MX chain. So, just keep that in mind. Alright.